Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about drugs for rheumatoid arthritis, which are otherwise known as rheumatologic agents. So let's get started. Now, firstly, let's define rheumatoid arthritis, and you'll notice sometimes I abbreviate it. The medical abbreviation for rheumatoid arthritis, or at least the medical shorthand that a lot of people use, is calling it RA, that abbreviation. So rheumatoid arthritis is RA. So if I say that at any time in the presentation, RA, that means rheumatoid arthritis. Anyway, rheumatoid arthritis is different from osteoarthritis. So that's, that's the main thing. So osteoarthritis is sort of a gradual wearing down of your joints. Rheumatoid arthritis is distinct from that because it's an autoimmune disease that can cause joint pain and damage throughout the body. So the immune system is mistakenly attacking its own tissues, specifically in the joints. And many times where you first see that, is in the hand. So you see the, the oop, you see the joints of the wrist and the fingers, and you might remember maybe a, a grandmother or an oral, old relative may have had sort of cramped up hands. That can be indicative of rheumatoid arthritis. It's more common in women than men, and the risk increases with age. And it cannot be cured, but the symptoms can certainly be managed with lifestyle choices and medication therapy. And as I said, it's different from osteoarthritis. That's just caused by the ends of the bones wearing down over time. And usually osteoarthritis only occurs maybe on, if, if you have it in one knee, you might have one bad knee and one good knee. Rheumatoid arthritis, if it's in both knees, chances are it's rheumatoid arthritis. Usually it appears on both sides of the body. Now, signs and symptoms of RA or rheumatoid arthritis, mainly pain, stiffness, or aching of more than one joint. Again, that's the key, more than one joint. And also a tenderness or swelling of more than one joint. It occurs on both sides of the body, both hands, both knees, as well as causing fatigue, tiredness, or weakness. And you can see right here, sort of to visualize it, the stages of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, stage one is the body mistakenly attacks its own tissue. So the immune system says, hey, something's going on in here. I'm going to attack it and cause a whole bunch of inflammation. So the body starts making antibodies and the joint starts swelling up because that's an inflammatory and inflammation response. Now, when you have this inflammatory response over a long period of time, because obviously your joint tissue isn't going away, it's, it's part of you, but the joint will start to become bent and deformed, fingers will become crooked, and these misshapen joints can start to press on nerves, which cause nerve pain along with that inflammation. So if not treated, it can progress to where there's no joint remaining at all, and the joint is essentially fused. So it's potentially a very debilitating disorder, which is why we want to get ahead of it and treat it not just symptomatically, but with some other medications as well. So treatment of rheumatoid arthritis can be symptomatic. NSAIDs are quite popular. It's non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You can see more about that in the pain lecture. They reduce inflammation in the joints and relieve pain. And corticosteroids also work to reduce inflammation. There are oral steroids like prednisone are very useful to slow and reduce joint damage. The problem with corticosteroids is they're very effective, but they're not great for long-term use because they're, they're used to mainly used to relieve symptoms of pain quickly before tapering the medication down. We don't like to use them for long term because they can cause weight gain, restlessness, irritability, a whole bunch of other side effects that generally people don't want to have to deal with. So what do we recommend to our patients with rheumatoid arthritis? We recommend disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMARDs for short. So we like to shorten everything in medicine. They become DMARDs. DMARDs are these really complex and interesting drugs. They suppress the body's immune inflammatory response to decrease chronic inflammation of the joints. So we're stopping that inflammation. We're stopping the immune system from even getting to the joint to attack it. So that's what we're trying to achieve with the DMARDs. So it prevents joint damage and disability, especially when started early in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So instead of treating the symptoms, instead of treating the... Um, inflammation once it shows up, because we can treat it with NSAIDs and corticosteroids and the person won't be in pain, but the disease will still progress. What we want is to modify the progression of that disease so it slows down and we give people a better quality of life and they can walk around and do their daily activities just as they normally want to. So let's start with conventional DMARDs. You may have heard of hydroxychloroquine, especially in the news lately. 
It, no, it does not treat COVID, but it is an anti-malarial drug, otherwise known as Plaquenil. And it works very well to decrease the body's inflammatory response, whether it is to malaria or in this case to rheumatoid arthritis. And it decreases pain and swelling by suppressing the immune system. And it's taken once daily. And the side effects in considerations, especially with long-term use, the main thing we worry about is retinal detachment, detachment of the retina within the eye. Uh, that's the part of the eye that lets you see anything. It can cause permanent vision loss, especially with long-term use over a course of months or years. So we have to be very, very cautious and monitor our patients who are taking hydroxychloroquine for that side effect. It can also cause nausea and vomiting. And it's quite pronounced. It's, they actually are pretty nasty symptoms as well as muscle weakness. Many people who take hydroxychloroquine either as like before they're going to a country that might have malaria. So say maybe an, an African or a Central American country where malaria is endemic, where the mosquitoes carry that parasite. That can, sometimes they have to take hydroxychloroquine or another anti-malarial drug before they go, just in case they get bitten by a mosquito when they're over there. And the number one complaint is always the nausea and vomiting. And it's just not the greatest drug to be on. Moving on to an even worse drug. Not to say it's worse and that it doesn't work. It's just a nasty drug in terms of side effects. Methotrexate, otherwise known as Rumatrex or Trexol, that uh, name, the, the brand name Rumatrex, really easy to remember that it's associated with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. It's also an oncological drug, meaning it treats cancer patients. So methotrexate is actually used as part of many different types of chemotherapy to suppress the immune system's inflammatory response, um, as well as to decrease pain in those patients as well. Now it's used as oral tablets or subcutaneous injections. You can see the sub-Q injection right there. It's dosed once per week. And often we do that once per week dosing just to decrease the side effects. It's often paired with other DMARDs as well. The DMARDs on the next slide often get paired with methotrexate. So stay tuned. Now side effects and considerations. Absolutely avoid alcohol because there's a potential for serious liver damage when taking methotrexate along with alcohol. Now it requires lab monitoring tests to assess liver function as well as blood counts because too much methotrexate can lead to uh, problems with uh, white blood cell count and anemia and other issues. And because it's suppressing your immune system so much that it's not attacking the joints, you have therefore an increased risk of infection while taking methotrexate due to a suppressed immune system, because unfortunately it can not only suppress the immune system in your knees or in your fingers, it needs to suppress the immune system throughout your whole body, which may lead you to be more vulnerable to infections that you otherwise would be able to fight off more easily. Now we also have our biologic DMARDs. These are the newer DMARDs and they're probably most effective when paired with methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine. Now, these are these very, very big and complicated, what we call biologic drugs. And because these molecules are so big and complicated, we can't have them as an oral formulation. So they're all injections, they're all IV. Now they come in uh, as Embril does, and so does Remicade, uh, usually as these pre-filled pens, which you can just administer yourself or have administered at a doctor's office. Etanercept or Enbril, it's an anti-TNF drug. So TNF alpha is just a, protein in your body, which causes inflammation by suppressing that protein, you have less inflammation in the body and that stops the inflammatory processes, which occur so often in rheumatoid arthritis patients. Now, Enbrel, the nice thing about it, it's administered once or twice weekly as a subcutaneous injection with a syringe or injector pen. So you really only have to worry about taking it once or twice a week. Similarly with infliximab or Remicade, uh, note the end of infliximab, that end suffix mab. Any th drug that you ever see that ends in mab, that's a monoclonal antibody. So it binds to uh, monoclonal antibodies. There are a wide range of drugs, but you see them a lot with your biologic drugs specifically because they're these big, large antibody mimicking compounds that work with your immune system in some way. In this case, the monoclonal antibody Remicade binds to inflammatory proteins in the body and that prevents you from having flares of rheumatoid arthritis. So it doesn't, it's not good for a, a, acute rheumatoid arthritis. Like if you're having a flare up, you can't take the Remicade and suddenly feel better. That's when we would use a corticosteroid, an NSAID, one of your pain killing drugs. This is for maintenance therapy as well as a Tannercept 
to decrease that level, that baseline level of inflammation within the body. Now, infliximab might be given by IV infusion or by injection. So it can be given two ways. And it has this very, very complex dosing. Obviously, you don't need to remember this, but just to give you an idea, it's three milligrams per kilogram given as in an IV infusion followed by an additional three milligrams per kilogram infusion doses at two to six weeks after the first infusion, then every eight weeks thereafter. Whew, not fun. But once you're on it, you only have to take it every eight weeks. So that's not too bad. However, as with methotrexate and so many immunosuppressing drugs, we have an increased risk of infection because the immune system is being suppressed. So it's super important to test patients for tuberculosis, for hepatitis, for HIV, and other infections before prescribing any immunosuppressive therapies. And that includes before prescribing Enbrel or Remicade. But that just about sums up rheumatoid arthritis. If you have any questions, as always, feel free. Thank you.